how do you find and cultivate that drive? Like there is a kid right now watching this man and they feel like you felt, they feel lost, alone, broken, stupid, lazy, like they're never going to amount to anything. And what you're talking about is the closest thing to a fucking superpower that this kid has ever heard. And right now he is on the edge of his seat. How does he, how does he like force himself to take that first step? I'm very fortunate that I grew up in a time when there was no phones and there was no social media. And I suggest, yes, I'm on social media on a very limited basis because I have a story to tell and it's a great platform. Use it as a platform, don't use it as your life. My biggest advice to give everybody in the world is like I say, we live in an external world. Everything is, is you gotta see it, touch it, it's, it's, it's external. If you can for the rest of your life live inside of yourself, stop listening to people who are calling you fat, gay, transsexual, nigger, everything that is makes no sense. All these insecure people putting their insecurities on you, you got to flush it out. You got to just be whoever the hell God or whatever the hell you believe in. If you believe in nothing but yourself, I don't care what it is. You got to take everything and throw it away. You have to believe in one thing, and that is yourself. And, and I'm not saying don't believe in God or what you believe in, but right now, for you to find greatness in yourself, you're not going to find it by looking in a book or by even hearing me. I may give you the spark but you've got to go inside yourself to find it. And that means you gotta be quiet. Shut the fuck up, go in a room, stop talking, search your soul, search your mind, search your abilities, and you'll find it. But if you're not looking for it, you won't find it. So you gotta go start your journey. And the journey starts with you finding, why the hell am I here on this planet Earth? Why am I here? And if you don't know that, you will live the rest of your life searching always asking the question, why? So on that last 19 miles, mm -hmm. feet are broken, ankles are taped, shin splints, stress fractures. What are the words that are going through your mind? Are you in the cookie jar? I'm, I'm deep in the cookie jar. And the cookie jar is something that I've made up of all the failures of my life, all the things that I, was, I failed and I went back. I failed and I went back and I finally succeeded all the things that kicked my ass. I put them all in the cookie jar because at times of hell, even the hardest men, in times of suffering, what we do is we forget how hard we really are because that's what suffering is. Suffering is a test. It's all it is. Suffering is the true test of life. And so that cookie jar travels in my brain. So whenever I get put in a situation where I have poopy pants, the woe is me mentality of, oh my God, life sucks. I take a second, I take the one second decision, I step out of my life for one second, go in the cookie jar, pull up, oh, motherfucker, you, went, you were in three hell weeks and finished two. One of those hell weeks, a guy died because it was so bad. Oh, you are a motherfucking badass. <laughs> you are. I put it back in the cookie jar and I remember who the fuck I really am. I'm not the kid that, got, that was called nigga. I'm not the scared kid. This is who I am. It's a reminder of who you truly are at the core of yourself. But what I was saying to myself the whole time on that track, and, it, and this is what I say to myself, self-talk and visualization are the two keys to my success. I believed for that last time, 19 miles, I was indestructible. Because I took myself in that chair, crapping up my back, peeing blood down my leg, shin splint stress fractures. I use all that for motivation versus negativity I use it for motivation. I, I said to myself, who on this fucking earth would still be going right now? You are. You are. You got to be the hardest motherfucker on the planet. Is it true? I don't give a fuck. At that time, right. it got me to the finish line of that fucking race. I believed it. I believe it today. I believed it enough to where my body said, He's not going to stop. And that's, I took all the negative things. I need to go to the hospital, this and that. And I used it all. Who the hell could even get on that chair? You did. Who the hell would even think about taping stress fractures up? You did. All those things I used for motivation. I'm going to use them for motivation. I mean, that's like, that's so fucking powerful. Talk to me about 
The dark side. It's something that I'm sure you take a lot of heat for. It's mm -hmm. something that I think a lot about. Um, I believe people should intentionally be motivated by beauty and rage. And so many people are afraid of the negative. What power have you found in the darkness? First, before I answer that question, I want to say everybody listening to this, um, I'm the happiest man on the planet Earth. So people may take this and as so many people do. We live in a very weakened society. So when they hear a throwback guy like me from back in the ancient days of, <laughs> of Garanimals, they often think this guy is just whatever. So if you think that I'm some unhappy guy, you're wrong. Having lived the life I've lived and seeing the other side, not being afraid to attack what was in front of me has made me happy. Say that again. And in fact, let me make sure I understood it. Getting to the point where you're not afraid to face the thing on the other side of the door that wants to attack you has made you happy. Right, right. It's really powerful. I hope people heard that. Right, that made me very happy. So basically, I just don't walk around with a dad going to smile on my face all the damn time. <laughs> so, you know, Merry Christmas. <laughs> but, um, but basically, what the dark side is, is we all have a cookie jar. And we all have a jar of fuck. <laughs> That's its official name. It's a jar of fuck, man, where shit just, it just ain't going right. And in Hell Week, what they do in Hell Week, because this is where I really went to the dark side. Mm. What they do in Hell Week is they design Hell Week to find your flaws. And they do a really good job of that. It's 130 hours of continuous training. You may get two hours of sleep. And they beat the shit out of you and find everything wrong with your mentality. And then they start Hell Week. And that's the beauty of it. And for me, I'm not some not, you know, nasty guy giving guy. You know, I, I don't have a great bit of talent in anything. So what got me through horrible times was the dark side. Was I created, my name is David Goggins. I created Goggins. Goggins is the guy that can take anything you put in front of them. You want to break my motherfucking legs? So be it. I have a way of going to a place like I did in that race where all the pain and suffering that they put on top of me in Hell Week, I will reverse that pain and suffering and I will take your soul. So every instructor that put me through buds, my job, what drove me was I wanted you to go home that night after you beat the living shit out of me and I smiled in your face. I wanted you to feel worse than I did and you were going home to a nice warm bed with your wife or your kids and a nice meal and I was still out there in the grip suffering for another 100 hours. I wanted you to think about me knowing that I'm comfortable being very unfucking comfortable and I want you to think about when you went through fucking hell week how uncomfortable you were and how bad you wanted to quit knowing I'm not thinking that fucking way. So the dark side is something that I've designed. It's an evil place I can go that very few things can hurt me. I use the hurt you're trying to put on me. I flip it upside down and use it. You trying to use it for kryptonite? No. It's power pellets for me. I'm, I'm using it for strength. I just flip negative into positive. That's all it is. Mm -hmm.